Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Answer the Call. I wasn't able to do it uh, this past Sunday because I had to work, and uh, it's kind of a bummer. I would have loved to hear your thoughts and opinions on CitizenCon that were more fresh. But, uh, yeah, we're doing it on Wednesday because this is when I have time right now to do it, and we're hopefully do another, uh, another Answer the Call on your thoughts on Alpha 315 hopefully it does get out of Wave 1. There's lots of issues with it, so we'll have to see. But for now, today, your thoughts on CitizenCon. Now, I do want to address a few things. I put out a video saying, and the thumbnail said, CitizenCon was pretty bad. That's my opinion, okay? I feel like it didn't meet even my very low expectations. Now, I don't expect CIG to do these big, grand, amazing, uh, ridiculous reveals, okay? Uh, I don't want that necessarily, so I think a lot of people misunderstood what I mean by bad, what I didn't like. Uh, I have an issue with the fact that the mission seems fake. What they did seemed fake. There could It could be a completely playable mission. I did, I did not have the advantage of watching the live stream. So apparently Jared came in and said that is a playable mission. Now, of course it is. They just played it. How, is it playable for players? It is impossible to tell. And the reason it's impossible to tell is there was zero mission logic on the screen. You didn't see, see go to this area, get the artifact. You didn't see the popping thing at the top middle of your screen. So for me, there's no way to tell whether or not it is. So it could have easily been faked. The NPCs did seem pretty scripted. And yeah, it just didn't seem even, it seemed less basic than the missions that we already have now. So that's my kind of issue with it. Other than that, it was just a really long pillar talk to me and it was um, not really a hype builder. It didn't really give me any excitement for certain features or certain tech. It was just hyper technical and it was hard for me to understand. I didn't like CitizenCon. Okay, um, I kind of feel the opposite about 315, and hopefully we'll talk about that on Sunday. So without further ado, you guys have definitely heard my opinions on uh, Answer the Call or on Weekend Review, and you're going to hear um, other people's opinions on Answer the Call. That's kind of the point. So without further ado, let's bring in Belladrim. Belladrim, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So let's uh, switch scenes there we go and bring your icon up there we go all right so what are your thoughts on citizen con uh very mixed feelings uh i would say that i was disappointed and to me there's no question that this is probably their uh i mean as far as citizen cons are concerned that was the worst one to date I do not think it was a complete disaster either. Uh, there were definitely some good moments in there, but yeah, no questions that it was the the most disappointing uh, Citizen Con to date. Uh, what was disappointing? Well, uh, I know some, probably many will say the lack of updates on Squadron 42 and server meshing. For me, that wasn't even that. I had zero like expectations. In mm -hmm. this regard, because I understand that server meshing is a complicated tech. It's not something they can just rush out the door. It's not possible. Uh, and we also know that they are actively working on it. And that's all I ask. So I had no expectations whatsoever. Uh, their panels on it were, like you said, it was a pillar talk. There was no new information. If you read the... Uh, uh, if you read the... Uh, monthly reports. Monthly and reports. And watch yeah, see yeah, and all that stuff. Like, because I saw people, I said, oh, but no, look, they talk about shard. Like, dude, if you re read the monthly reports, they talked about this months ago. Yeah. There's no new information here. But but that's okay. That wasn't, I feel like that wasn't for me. That was for probably the people that still didn't understand server meshing. And that's okay. I'm fine with it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the two main points. I think the problems were mainly on the first panel and on the last panel. Uh, the first panel, uh, well, first of all, the, uh, I'm, I'm not going to even talk about the concept art and everything. I'm going to focus on the demo on the first panel. Uh, okay. So the, a positive that you 
didn't really see as a positive, uh, and you're probably not going to agree with me. You said that you can't play clouds. I disagree with that. Okay. Uh, because now, I, I agree that in the demo, they didn't play clouds. But uh, one of the things that I don't know if you remember in the demo in 2016, where uh, there was the colony and then it arrived uh, in an area and then, oh, uh, bad weather, blah, blah, blah. So he had to land and was forced to use a rover. That's something we don't have in game right now. And we do have bad, I mean, we had bad, really bad weather conditions when they released uh, New Babbage. And it was even too, so bad that, you know, you would, you would fly like there was no more weather and then all of a sudden whoa, lots of wind and you it would crash. I think that's good. The problem at the time and why they pretty much nerfed it now is that you had no visual feedback whatsoever to understand that you were in like in the middle of the storm. There was nothing to tell you that. Uh, you would fly and it was a beautiful sunny day and then all of a sudden crazy winds and you would crash. This provides, I think, uh, if you played maybe like a game like Sea of Thieves or even uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, the clouds allow you to really have a very clear visual indication that, okay, if I go over there... It's going to be stormy. That, yeah. yeah. And, and that, to me, opens gameplay opportunities. Even if you're like a trader, for example, and you like to go to, uh, I don't know, buy drugs in Jumptown, and then you fly over and you you see that huge storm over it, and you're like, oh... Do I go in there and risk it, or do I just wait for the storm to pass? So I I do think that this, uh, even though it's only visual, it's visual that can, they, that allows them to open up gameplay possibilities. But that's about it for clouds. For the rest of the gameplay, uh, I think the the scripted thing is it's kind of fifty fifty. Uh, I do think that a part of it was real. The one that I didn't believe for a second was the stealth part. Uh, just because the NPCs, and it's not even the mission thing. I don't think that's was really what tipped me off. It's really the fact that all the NPCs were conveniently looking away from the player whenever he was moving to a new area. Yeah, that's not natural. Uh, that feels really that that that's a telltale sign that they didn't want to show you how an NPC reacts to a character that is hiding behind a box or behind a door. Uh, so. Too convenient, and yeah, uh, I I didn't buy it. I think it's exactly what you said. It was the the same demo as uh, 2019. The fact that they brought back the cutting tool doesn't help. Uh, the stuff that we saw on the 2019 that still isn't here, and that was on the roadmap, and now it's not even on the roadmap. And they yeah, the cutting tool was like... literally removed from the roadmap. And then yeah, they so you're it. like. So you're like, okay, so basically you took that, you probably have the, pro they probably have a prototype that they used for 2019 and they just copy pasted in this one. I think that was a mistake uh, because, you know, people don't have that much of a short memory. But yeah, it's still overall the demo didn't really piss me off uh, because I was still hoping for the last panel with Tony Z to give me something a little bit more juicy in regards to what we would have in the short term. And I didn't get that. And I was with my org on Discord at the time. It is at this very moment that people really got angry. Uh, and we, there was about 20 of us uh, on Discord. And the Tony Z part, when basically it was just a glorified pillow talk where they just talk, 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 talk with uh, like no sign, like the special, like like the reputation and the cargo refactor, all stuff that you know are supposed to come soon-ish. But it's like they're talking about it as if this was still like in pre 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 -produ production. And that was so depressing to see. <laughs> that that was the part that really really got me angry. Um, and yeah, uh, before that I was kind of okay, but at that point I was I was just upset. All right, so I tried. I'm trying to be a better host. So I let yeah. you go on your. It was basically three topics, but I'd like to address them individually. The clouds. So. I 
I like your point. I think it, it does make some sense. But the point you made about clouds is literally the exact same point you just made about Tony Z on the fact that like you're just talking to me about the possibilities, but not the actual realities. And okay, wow, the clouds could be played one day, but they have you literally talked about a demo in twenty sixteen. That was five years ago, man. Five years ago. No indication of that anywhere in but sight, right? If I may, if Go I ahead. may, the uh, the uh, the weather the weather systems that makes it dangerous to fly with your ship already exist in game. So all they need is the to combine the visual clue with the actual system, and we have that. But you're right that demo. I mean that demo was was bullshit. Like I'm not going back on that. But yeah, it's 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 going from the bullshit demo. It's like the sandworm. Like the sandworm is bullshit. But I'm I'm sure that one day we will have a sandworm. But that one, not that one. That one is bullshit. I'm saying that this this the, the clouds are the maybe the opportunity uh, to pass from that bullshit demo to the actual application in game. I hope yeah. you're right. But most likely, the clouds were the opportunity to end up on r slash gaming again or whatever. You know, social yeah. media, a nice image. Yeah, for sure. Every community oh, manager yeah. posted that fucking image and sh everybody showed it everywhere because it looked sick. I, I can't. I candy for sure. Like no, yeah. no. Uh, so so one hundred percent. The 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 like, reason for it was really eye candy. Yeah. But I do think there's opportunity there. Okay. Fair and and agreed. Fair. The next thing you talked about was the mission. Um. Yeah. I, we're kind of on the same page with that one a little bit. I just I just think um. I would like to see them. I, I just think the 2018 sitcom, I think it was 2018, where they had the Clovis mission, right? They did yeah. the mission, and then we had the mission. And we could still mm -hmm. play the mission, even though it might be, like, bugged or whatever, right? Um, I think the, the best points of Star Citizen uh, that they're really lacking and really missing out on right now, where they could really, really get some wins, is with the mission givers and telling stories and having this like storyline that you could play. But mm. each mission giver you could play back and forth with because you can't, you know, do the mission giver for one and be able to do the other one. So it's something that yeah. you would have to like work your way into. But, but I think that the, uh, I mean, they 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 removed at the par. Uh, they, I mean, I feel like they just completely stopped the, those mission givers because probably, and I'm just speculating here, probably because I, we know that they are completely revamping how they uh, their mission system works. That's my take on it. Like they probably saying, well, we're gonna have a new mission system that's gonna change. We know with different variables and stuff like that. So. But Whatever these we're going to do. But these yeah. aren't missions that have different variables. Like the mission giver storylines well, are not the missions that they're trying to make dynamic. Not, not, not right now, but may, 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 maybe they do want them to be dynamic. Uh, because if, if you, I mean, uh, remember the Mice Eckhart mission, uh, which also turned out to be a bullshit mission. I mean, we do have the Mouse Eckhart mission, but remember the one they, that, that they actually showcased. Oh, that was super they, fake, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was super fake, but it it they did show a dynamic element to it. Like you know, you could be betrayed, and you had choices to make, and everything like that. So there were valuables in the way they presented it. All that 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 mission has it was presented was not in game. So I do think that they do want it to be dynamic. It's just that their mission structure right now doesn't allow that. So essentially, what you're saying is, and and I think this is okay but I still don't like the fakeness of it. Only show it if True. you can actually do it is I agree. the idea of each mission could have, even if it's a mission giver mission, could have variables so other people can experience different things. And that's what they're trying to showcase at CitizenCon, yet it was all completely, most likely scripted and faked, even though like, I'm just not buying it that it wasn't. I'm, uh, bu I'm I just buying that it's like every other CitizenCon, because why so wouldn't I? I, th I think the 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 takeaway, like the 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 one thing we could take away from the demo that could be real and happen soon, are stuff like the NPCs walking outside, uh, probably the NPCs cowering. That that part I I buy, and I think we're gonna see, uh, uh, especially the walking outside. Uh, I think we're gonna see soon-ish. But yeah, the stealth part I th I think was definitely BS. Uh, 
I didn't buy it for a second. Yep. So we agree on that one. And then lastly, the Tony Z thing, I think you actually got a look at what you would see recently where they talked. I think the biggest takeaway from the Tony Z one was, hey, on the Jump Town 2, we really want to make it so players trigger that instead of us triggering that. That's a big deal. Oh, yeah. But that's uh, yeah, the that was like the end... only thing, though. You know? Yeah. So, so the end part when he stopped talking with the others and talking in front of the camera. Okay, so that was the moment where he was going really Tony Z mode, and I thought that I was getting something a little bit more interesting. But everything be before that, when they were like three at the table, oh my god, I, I was falling asleep. Yeah, it would, the the Tony Z only parts were scripted, so he couldn't go insane, and he just yeah. like in the in the the pillar talk moment just. Uh, and, and he's like going back and forth and talking to this guy and talking to that guy about all this different yeah, yeah. stuff and you're just like Pretty much. bro like nobody cares about things that don't exist like it's we want it like the big thing for me and I, I always say nobody and then somebody in the comments goes well I care and I'm like alright well great buddy but in, in reality well, like the thing is 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 I think most people want to hear about what is coming what I'm going to be able to use at some point and not the the theoretical use cases for what they're building and and that's the problem is it's too much theory and not enough action yeah i mean nubifier said it best like there's a difference between transparency and exposition uh, uh you know transparency is telling us exactly where you are on this and exactly. this and, and and exposition is like hey this is how this works and this is like I don't. I don't want a lesson on, on how to be a game developer. Uh, I'm sure some people are going to, to like that, but but let's they're be definitely honest, in the minority. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's not white backers. Like I don't. I don't care how it works. Like I I, I might like cars, for example. That doesn't mean I'm a mechanic. Uh, you know, it's not the same thing. So, yeah. Uh, still, I, I wouldn't have minded. I think there's definitely like a crowd for this stuff uh, sort of thing, but it should have been balanced with some more. Not necessarily eye candy, but some more concrete information. And I think that was kind of lacking in this panel. But the other thing that I think was missing, and I'll, I, I don't want to take too much time because I'm sure the other callers want to talk and have their own time. But the other thing I want to talk about is the lack of, and that was the one thing that kind of surprised me, was the lack of uh, gameplay, like actual gameplay oriented or oriented and demo uh, that would showcase the stuff that is on the progress tracker, stuff like uh, you know the uh, refueling and the uh, uh, or the fires or the uh, the salvage. I I was honestly it, I didn't expect anything with meshing or anything, but I was honestly expecting that they would show one of these to kind of you know balance the the in the, the long term stuff, which was pretty much the first demo. And uh, hey, even though meshing is going to take time, here's some cool stuff that's coming soon. And they didn't do that. And that I was really surprised. But then, you know, Lando did come uh, and explain that, you know, it was choosing between ISC and CitizenCon in that regard. I can understand that. But now that puts the pressure on ISC. And I'm waiting to see the, the coming ISCs in a couple of months. If they're going to show that indeed, even though we're not going to get meshing soon, there's still cool stuff in the horizon. So the pressure is on ISC now. Yeah, I mean, especially if he's making statements like that. But the and like he went on Astro Pub's podcast and said that you know it was yeah. underwhelming mm -hmm. because it it we were showing more. Um, I'm I buy it, but I, I like I kind of want to hear what you think, and this is probably where we're stopped. Is I buy it, but I don't. Like, yeah, sure, that's probably true. But at the same time, you don't have a lot to show because you haven't finished meshing. You haven't done your, you know, mission reworks or whatever things that you need to do. All the tech that you spent hours explaining to us um, is the same tech that we were hoping was done sometime in 2020. You know, um, so. I don't, I don't think they needed meshing, for example. I mean, the, the one thing that to me was a no-brainer, and I agree, like, I, I, I buy his explanation, and I'm one, I'm pretty sure that this is why they didn't do it. I'm pretty sure that he probably thought, well, who, if I put, if I put, if I put this stuff in the, um, in the CitizenCon, when we put it out in the IC, people will say, boring, which, uh, we already saw that at CitizenCon, give us something new. I 100% understand this point of view. But I think there was a way to compromise, and uh, something like the fire system—it's something that was already teased. 
Uh, I don't understand why they couldn't like give us an update on that or even give us a sizzle reel of very short, very short, like, hey, th here's the stuff you can look forward to in the coming months. We're not going to go too much into detail, but you know, there's good yeah. stuff coming. Uh, yeah. the, the fact that, that they di didn't do that, I think, was very depressing, and it just creates doubt that, okay, there are only two op Basically, there are only two options here. Uh, well, two possibilities. The first possibility is that he's saying the truth, and we're going to see that in the ICs, and that's fine. I mean, I would rather this stuff to be spread all over the year than just have one citizen con with all the good stuff and then nothing for a year. Or, and that's a very good, uh, strong possibility, uh, the like you said, they have nothing to show, and in the next couple of months, we're not going to see that in the IC. We're going to see uh, salvage disappearing. We're going to see refueling sliding. We're going to see so so that so it's one or the other. So I'm waiting in the so on that regard, I'm going to wait and see you know if it's all talk or if it's true. Yeah, I I think um, the the mention of. Like some sort of sizzle reel. You don't like. I don't even think you need to show that much. I think if you yeah. just went ahead and said, "Hey guys, I know there's so many people here that are excited about Star Citizen. Maybe this mm -hmm. is your first time seeing it. There's a lot of people watching this that have never watched it before, um, and are here. This is what you're going to be able to experience in the next few months. Well, here, you know, exactly. just in case you didn't know, 315, medical gameplay, looting, like a lot of like groundbreaking things that are really exciting that honestly, like I'm really enjoying 315. And me too. I love the, it. Yeah, it's great. And and what is coming in 316? What is planned for 316? You know, just real quick saying, hey, obviously, you know, some things, plans change, whatever, but this is what we're we're planning for. Just a little bit of like this is what's coming. I think could have been a really good win for them. Like it doesn't change anything for you or I that pay attention to the project a lot. But I think in general, in front of a bunch of people that don't, it's probably a, a, would would have been a good idea to do yeah. something like that. It's it's a little thing, but it would have made a great difference because. And I'm gonna hand there uh, and let all the us uh, talk. But yeah. when Chris started uh, the uh, oh, and that's uh, sorry, that's one last thing. Uh, Chris not being part of the show, I think that was a huge mistake. Uh, huge huge mistake. It's just it's it a just mistake either way. Uh, no matter what you yeah. do, it's a mistake with him. So it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, he either says too true. much or he doesn't says enough. The guy can't win. So I I don't I don't even bring those parts up really. Ah, no, 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 not even saying just that he was not part of the presentation, you know, like, I think it, it, he brings an energy that's uh, like when you see him, hey, uh, go to that camera, like, uh, and, and just see him being excited for his own game, because now it feels like, okay, yeah. he's not, he's not, he's not even like, if, if he doesn't show that he's intro, interested in his, in, in his own game, why should we, the backers that back his vision, should? I don't know, it, it, it almost feels like, it just, it's maybe not the case but it feels like he doesn't care anymore and that's not a good look uh even though that's probably not the what they were yeah that's but definitely not true but at the same time no no for sure it, it, it's for the sure. optics of it right Exa exactly for sure okay. i i do st still think that he's involved but just to finish when he started the the, the hello presentation he said well we're going to show you uh a bit of what's coming short term and what's coming long term I feel that Citizen Con was extremely focused on the on the long term, on the imagine, the dream, the blah, the, the usual stuff. Not enough on the here's what you're actually getting. And I, yeah, I define I really short hope, term <laughs> for us, please. Chris. Uh, under one year. Yeah. Under one year. Uh, it's too much stuff that we're not seeing in in, in the coming year. So, yeah, maybe balance this a little bit more. But yeah, that's all I have to say on the matter. Okay. Well, Belgium, that was that was a fun call. I appreciate it. I think there was a lot of of good things that you said, and um, yeah, opened my eyes a little bit on some of the things that I had said. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. You have a good one. Huh? Talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right. Jab Loka is our next caller. Jab, what's up, dude? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? What's up? Not much. Um. What are your thoughts on Citizen Con? Um, on one hand, disappointed. On another hand, uh, I expected this because most of the stuff, uh, as far as we know, is still being worked on and is not finished. So, what are they going to show? The stuff that's being worked on, okay, but that yeah. can be two years away. Yeah. So that's unrealistic. 
And I don't think it's the worst Citizen Con because it's the most realistic Citizen Con. Stuff still is still being worked on. It's nowhere near done. That's it. That's what I got from this Citizen Con. And I I can live with it because well, if you don't expect much, you can't be disappointed. And that's well, and I think most people expected this kind of Citizen Con. I mean, they get, they gave the names of the demos out pretty quick and i immediately was like yeah i'm not taking a day off of work for this because it's very clear that we're we got a while um i couldn't justify taking off work for an event that's not really gonna do anything for me in the short term because we got we got a long time you know i'm more focused on the long term and uh yeah i just didn't have very high expectations either and it just is what it is but any like anything on specific panels that excited you disappointed you um i think it was the most horrible thing to start with concept art yeah. I, I don't understand why they did that like you First would think like the do demo. the demo then right yeah exactly yeah. just do the demo and then show how you made the demo with concept art and stuff then i can at least be like okay skip this and mm -hmm. I've seen the eye candy. Um, but yeah, the, the demo was realistic. It's the best thing they can do at the moment. Just, yeah, it's terrible for us, but yeah, better but it than was, show it wasn't, fake stuff. I mean, it wasn't, I really don't think it was a real mission that was like put yeah. into the game by a designer necessarily. I think it was just a bunch of NPCs standing still and one guy yeah. who is literally a what were they called an admin remember the admins that we had literally in 2.0 where you would go to them and deliver a box or something or, or like the first patch of 3.0 and they never worked like that was or we remember, had an admin or remember when they showed a walking uh, walking on planets in 20, uh, 2016 yeah and they showed it again but like i, I i'm I know they're working on a uh, planet uh, nav mesh. mesh. Yeah, yeah, that's like so the thing I, I have do... my eye on the most. Yeah, so we can have AI outside and inside the bunker. That's yeah. a great thing, and we know they're working on it for months, and that's a good thing. But the thing is, we we just don't know if it's real in the demos. And 2016 is worse for me than this year because 2016 it was all fake. All the um, dates were fake, all the demos were fake, everything was fake. At least we know some of this is real and, well, no dates is better than fake dates for me. Yeah. Um, and, um, sorry, go ahead. And the first demo also showed that Pyro is still very much in pre-development. Like... They're not even done with the stations. They're not even done with the plans themselves. They're not um, done with uh, populating those planets. Probably but don't it doesn't have, even have missions on those planets. It doesn't matter because Pyro won't come. If server machine is not coming. And that's at least still like a year, maybe even two away. I know. Well, it's good that they didn't estimate. So if they do happen to put in like their first initial like they definitely said that the initial implementation of server meshing will be not dynamic and will be much more simple than what they're planning on doing but if they deliver it sooner than that it's kind of a win for them you know yeah if they can do it by the end of the year uh or by the end of next year like sh at least show um some stuff like selling items and making items valuable in uh 316 that's a big win for me for this year at least because you at least have the most basic loop there possibly can be for yeah. a game looting and selling that's the bare minimum for a pre-alpha for me um and then next year if they can put out pyro cool but i don't expect anything yeah, I mean, that's kind of um, how I feel. Like, what I, I guess the question that I should probably ask everybody from now on that comes in the call is what expectations did CitizenCon set for you for the next year? Um, 
Because that's I kind of the point gonna, of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they're gonna... Um, if it's gonna be a physical CitizenCon, I think it's gonna be more hyped up and more fake again. Because you want to hype up the crowd. There's no real crowd to hype up. Like, yeah. in a, a digital um, CitizenCon. I mean, there could have been PogChamps in Twitch chat. I don't know. I doubt yeah. there were. It's probably mostly resident sleepers, but yeah. Mostly resident sleeper, indeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think they're going to show as much because uh, imagine if they don't release Pyro next year and they're going to show Pyro again and again and again and again. Nobody's hyped for Pyro like three times. No, they'll show Nyx next time, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Kobe. And then they'll say, but you can go here in 4.0. Like, where, where's 4.0 on the roadmap? That was yeah, one exactly. of the things that I was like, yo, what do you mean 4.0? Like, three. We knew that last year. <laughs> 3.12 changed. Like, I think it was like, what, 3.10 was uh, was originally 4.0. We're now on 3.15 and 3.16. Are, are any of these going to change into 4.0? Or. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And they showed the change jump, and oh, that annoyed me the most. They showed the jump point in Stanton, Oh, the pineapple? And then they showed the. Yeah, yeah. The cloud and then pineapple? they showed the jump, uh, jump point in Pyro. But they didn't show the transition because the server tech is not ready. So we don't, we know it's just fake. It's fake. That's yeah. the annoying part. They don't show the transition between servers or OCS, that kind of stuff. And um, they don't have really something tangible for us to play I in don't, the near future. I just don't care about the possibilities anymore because you've either not achieved them. Like since, since my backing in 2013, you've either not achieved the possibilities you've done them, but they've been like kind of meh or you've done a couple of them and they've been really amazing. Right? Like uh planet tech. I, like I think yeah. it exceeded even how cool they said it would be, but yeah. it also created a lot of the problems that we have now. Right? So there's, there's, okay. yeah, there's give and take there for me. I only care about what is possible now. What are you doing with what you have now? What are you doing with what you have in the next patch? That is all I care. I would have loved to see Citizen Con have been a 315 reveal. Because 315 was actually pretty good. So the idea of like these this is what's possible in 315. And you show the I don't know, the the different mission types that are available the dynamic the dynamism of the bunker missions that exist now with the what is it infiltrate and defend missions right that's pretty that's uh, pretty cool the loot all that stuff would have been i thought a, a would in my opinion cool. a much better citizen god but i would have liked to know like what can they do without server meshing if they told us like we can put this in the game without server meshing because they could but they would have to the... redo it after they brought meshing is yeah the after issue. Exactly, and that's the that is the main problem. Like what the game is, uh, what the the game is currently having. Yeah, they can't do much with a server mesh because it either have to rework stuff or it doesn't work. Because the monkey meshes are cool, but what I've seen, um, they don't work because the servers are just crap. Did you like, get a you better? Have... Did you get a better understanding of server meshing after the panel, or are you just more confused like I am? Uh, it was what I expected. Like people that want the global shards are just unrealistic with current surfing technology. Like you can't have, you just can't. But, it's not possible. But and that, but even, that was literally like, what we were sold on. Yeah, one ugh, Chris. Oh, well, we were sold on the old idea of what the game was going to be, because in 2012 we're not gonna have full planets. We're not gonna have. Uh, most of the stuff we have now, we're, we're not going to have. Or yes, at least... It was going to be sharded anyway, essentially. Yeah. Because you were going to be in different areas. It was areas. going to be shard Exactly. And it was going to be maps. And um, there were loading screens, with, uh, but not real loading screens. Yeah, like but your ship flying we, down. Yeah. So what we have now is, to be honest, better than the promise he had back then. But... Not entirely as well. I don't know at the moment anymore because it's every year it's a promise they just can't deliver and it's it's bad. But what you're gonna do about it? I already put money in it and yeah. 
It is what it is at it, the moment. It was really a bad couple of years with 2020 and 2021. I think Citizen Con was just destined to not be very good. Yeah. It kind of is what it is. It is what it is, and that's my final say, I guess. <laughs> okay. No problem, Jeff. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, have a nice day, everyone. You too. Bye-bye now. All right, and our next caller is a good friend of mine. Meyer, how you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? Uh, It's going. So what did you do, like, um, a live reaction and everything to, to Citizen Con? And how do you feel about uh, yeah, it now? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a... Yeah. I mean, After. I wouldn't call it a, a live reaction. You know, I, just, I watched it, right? Yeah. You know, and it was what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, uh, what were your questions for it? Or you just want to know my opinions in general? Uh, I think I just more would like to know your opinions in general. But I guess the question that I would ask everybody, and I think is a good one, is what are your expectations for the next year after watching Citizen Con? Right. So my expectations for next year. Um, so I guess I have like, you know, personal expectations and I have like, you know, what do I think that CIG are going to do next? Right. Yeah. Um, so like my, my personal expectations will probably be something, you know, along the lines of, OK, what, what's the stuff they didn't show? Will they show it to us, this, you know, next year? And then what I expect them to do is kind of like measure the response from this year and then like uh, basically use that in order to like uh, inform what they want to do mm -hmm. you know because i know a lot of people who watched um citizen con uh this year they uh they essentially especially the ones who have been with star citizen the longest they didn't really receive it too well because they yeah. they were kind of expecting what citizen con has been you know like uh True. which is kind of you know has kind of been like uh, uh for lack of a better uh, term you know i think that people this year have looked at citizen con and gone oh it kind of lacks substance okay but i feel like the substance that citizen con has had in the past few years has been more of like fluff demos, you know, like think the sandworm, think the quote unquote stealth gameplay in the NPC flown ship in Microtech. Think yeah. anything that you've seen before in any of the citizen cons and then think about what we then got after. It's all been fluff, right? Whereas with this citizen con, it's basically just been one massive ISC about what's in progress with actual things that look like they could be in the game soon as opposed to like wow sandworm i can't wait for layer two which we have no you know like no jump point uh you know points to or whatever um but yeah i agree but at the same time it's kind of oh man there i think the cutting tool is like a telling thing right we see it go on the roadmap we see it come off the roadmap as soon as it's good enough to be on citizen con my question right. is uh do you think that in progress now could have some quotes around it because it was just in progress for citizen con certain things like when i look at a lot of the roadmap updates i was like oh okay so that was for citizen con okay that was for citizen con okay that was now how much of that will continue after saturday is is what i'm curious about it's obviously all speculation that we would have here but uh -huh. at the same time We've seen it in the past. Exactly. Which is why I feel like because this Citizen Con has seemed so underwhelming, I think it's because they've basically done like a 180 when it comes to what they want to show. Mm -hmm. I, I know that like uh, Disco Lando was on like another podcast earlier uh, where he was saying that, you know, essentially what they decided to do this year for Citizen Con was basically show all the big ticket things throughout the year in ISC and then in Citizen Con just make it one big ISC and um you know see how that went. And then as you can see we uh, saw how it went. It's yeah. exactly so that's why I think that next year perhaps we might not see more of like, you know, when they're making things like medical gameplay and you know changing the inventory system and stuff like that. I feel like um items next year that will be as big as these things will likely be more hidden less like this is everything and then here it is until citizen con for the citizen con impact because people seem to 
like that Citizen Con impact. How do you feel about that? Because that that is uh, th there's a lot of give and take when it comes to that. There there's positives and negatives to that, obviously. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, how do I feel about it personally? Yeah. Uh, I didn't really go into Citizen Con expecting anything. Honestly, I think I'm I'm too old now to expect no, anything. I, yeah, that's fine. I mean, the actual um, the idea of what Citizen Con might be like next year, what we're going to be seeing on ISC next year. Uh huh. Like that kind of thing. Do you prefer that style where they might hold back a lot more uh, for that that third quarter patch of sharing? And then um, doing a big reveal at CitizenCon and then going, hey, play it today kind of thing. Right. I mean, let's be honest, though, here. Who is CitizenCon for? It's not for it's not supposed to be for, you know, like uh, somebody who has no idea what SC is to see all this big stuff and then like, you know, hype them up for it. It's supposed to be for us. So it, like um Yeah, but it's not entirely for us, I don't think. True, true. Because it is you a can't deny thing. thirty something thousand people watching on Twitch is not advertising, you know? True. I'm sure like seventy percent of those like, you know, are not backers or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're there to to see what's up. But like, yeah, so it, it's a big marketing thing. So like uh I don't know. I mean it, me as a backer, what I would like to see for Zincon next year would actually be something similar to this. I do feel like what this year was missing really was, you know, Chris Roberts, like n normal directed gameplay thing. It wasn't like there was no narrative. There was no beginning. OK, here is the guy in the universe doing a thing. And then they didn't close it. OK, now they're back completing the thing. It just seemed like here's some gameplay. Here is ISC. Here's a whole bunch of lectures. And then here is, Tony. you know, it, it just it felt more clinical Some, almost. Be somebody yeah. said it felt like GDC. Um, Kind of, yeah. It, it it felt very clinical, and GDC is extremely clinical, you know? Like, uh, it, it, it started off, you know, like, uh, with, again, that substance, right? It started off with the pyro missions and that kind of thing. And then, you know, like, before Tony Z's, like, uh, talk, we had one thing, which I'm sure a lot of aspiring game devs would have really liked about the gen 12 renderer and then yeah. we had another thing about sound design which i'm sure some people would have really liked but those really just felt like lectures right like it, a lot of people like you know they don't want to know how the sausage is made they just want to eat right yeah so i'm so hungry Maya. Yeah. i'm so <laughs> i'm so hungry dude oh. right so like that Gen 12 stuff and the sound design stuff could have so would have been the better fit for something like uh, ISC, right? Yeah. Because because you know like there is no substance to that. What do we want? We want missions. We want to know what's happening with the reputation system. We want all this sort of stuff. Um, but uh, like we're how many years now? How many Citizen Cons in now? You know, like every year, you know, they're learning or whatever. I mean, all we can do is say hopefully next year won't be as you know disappointing or it won't be it wouldn't have this or that or would have more of that but i know that you're talking to people and you're asking for their opinions but i would like to know from you what, what do you want to see from citizen con um i really i i prefer the mm. uh 315 or whatever the third quarter patch would be like this uh -huh. big kind of I'm not going to talk about what I want to see from CitizenCon. It'll be part of it. I'm talking about what I right. want to see from Star Citizen's development in the future. I th I don't believe these quarterly patches are at least doing me well. I think if we really, really go in and say, we're going to spend a lot of time on these things, really nail them down, really, really focus in and hone mm -hmm. in on certain things and make them great. And let's deliver the medical patch, the uh inventory patch or the insert theme here patch that is right. in integral to star citizen and what it was planned to be and whatever the third quarter patch i think every quarter leading up to that should be leading into what that big reveal will be and then that big reveal is given at citizen con and it is playable at the end of citizen con Okay. Um, that that is what I would like to see. So whatever the third quarter patch planned for next year would be, everything mm -hmm. leads up to that. That is your moment. That is your big thing. Or maybe your big moment and your big thing is 
the fourth quarter patch, whatever you want to do. But CitizenCon is what highlights what you've been working on behind the scenes and what you haven't shared. It, whatever right. it happens to be. So, um, you know, possibly what it should be next year is your jump point patch and what all right. that entails. You know, vari mission variety would have to be a massive thing in, in that next one, right? Things like that. So that that's mm -hmm. what I look would really look for, uh, towards is very small incremental patches or tech patches or bug fixing patches, lots of cleaning up shit uh, in the first and second quarter, third quarter, boom, hit big, fourth quarter, boom, hit big, and there you go. Or right. first, second, third quarter, slow, and fourth quarter, just deliver the features, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, I like the sound of it. I just, like, I, I have no idea how, like, CIG do their, like, you know, development, right? I don't know how the producers have but things laid out. But all they talk and... about is how they do development. How do you not know at this point? <laughs> I don't I don't know either, obviously, but yeah. Nah, I mean, like, whenever the producers are up, they're talking about how they have to lead cats to milk instead of, like, talking about how they actually work and what they do, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's, yeah. A lot but of fluff. It is... A lot of fluff. Yeah, a lot of fluff. But you know what? It's... I'm not upset with Citizen Con. I'm not. I'm not overwhelmed by it. I'm not underwhelmed by it. I'm simply whelmed. You know, like I was, I was expecting it. I was maybe expecting a bit more at the end. Maybe like again, I was thinking that there might be another gameplay thing at the very end when Chris Roberts showed up again. I was like, oh, finally, now he's going to talk about you know like what's you know they're going to go through a jump point or something. I think that that to me, if we had that, that would have been fine. I mean, mm -hmm. everything else was just like. A lot of the hype of Citizen Con to me is lost just because the human element's gone when you're not there and you don't have people in the crowd going woo to everything. You the know? thing is, like, is so I it, never go. Yeah, I've only right. been to one Citizen Con, and okay. um, in sixteen. Yeah, and I don't feel I don't feel that like the crowd or anything like it didn't change. Like as someone who doesn't go and experience the Citizen Con this way often. Mm -hmm. The the thing that was the problem for me was not the the fact that there was no crowd. It was that it was very dry, and it was like right. you said, it was very much like lectures. And and I'm mm. just, I I just again about the sausage being made thing. Like if I wanted to watch that, I would watch how it's made. Like yeah, you know, and I I don't want to watch Star Citizen how it's made. I want to watch Star Citizen how it's played. You know, that, like that's 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 what I need. One hundred percent. You know, I, I mean, like to 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 their credit, I suppose you know, like the lecture ones would have been side panels, but instead you just had to sit through it anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, okay, yeah. fair, fair. They would normally push those to the side. Yeah. 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 But, so, uh, that but makes yeah, sense. I, I I would love to see more how it's played. I mean, like, yes, let's let's uh let's trademark that because yeah. <laughs> Right yeah yeah it's just it's uh it's a bummer so that that's why i feel the way i, I feel about like what i think should citizen, citizen con should be though is i think it yeah. should all be leading up to this big moment so it's a celebration of what everything it's a celebration of us it's the celebration mm -hmm. of the developers and what they were able to achieve and it's the celebration of the development it's the celebration of the game it's the celebration of ship sales and and monetary goals it's literally everything in that moment. yeah and um yeah that i think that would be cool yeah so like the month isn't over yet we have like the iae and stuff for other things and we have like the end of year stuff do you expect anything from the end of year um i would honestly have to look and i can't look at the roadmap right now what is what is even planned for 316 <laughs> jeez man i don't know <laughs> yeah i because i really yeah. i really focus on the now more than anything I do Same. not like I actually don't know what's in 316 right now. Um yeah. but yeah, I I just like, I don't know. The roadmap roundup has conditioned me basically to wait till things are blued, so I just don't look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. People but, said Hull uh, C and Salvage Tech Tier 0. Cargo okay, refactor. So, so I mean right. I guess the Tony Z panel and some of the things that they mentioned about cargo uh i think that takes looting and brings it to like a bigger scale and i've enjoyed looting. Right. i don't know about you um but 
Looting's been good, apart from like, I went to a bunker and then tried to equip an NPC stuff and my character got bugged. Apart from that, it was fine. Bugged in what way? Because I've also had that. Like, uh, I tried to uh, put on the NPC's clothes and then my hands and head disappeared. Oh, okay. And for then me, I couldn't it, equip anything else. For me, the number one thing that needs to change, and I guess we should save this for uh, Sunday's uh, answer the call, but mm -hmm. is when I put on NPC armor and I and I loot items into it, they disappear. Oh, I didn't even try that. Yeah. So NPC armor just isn't normal armor. Yeah. So like, everybody know, else who know, wears normal armor can just go out and loot things, but then you don't get that uh, I started with nothing and gained something feeling. You have right. to literally buy the armor, so it makes no sense. Or, I'm, I don't know, even armor I found in uh, a bunker just disappeared off of me after a 30k, so, yeah. Mm, it might just be that it's not done. I, I know that, like, uh, and I know you want to say this for your next uh, ATC, but in the patch notes, they were like, they don't even want feedback for, like, that part of the game because, like, they know it's, they're, they're, they haven't finalized it yet, you know? I love that. Put it in, but we don't want feedback. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, uh, guys. But yeah. Yeah. But all right, Meyer. I guess that's mm. probably where we call it. Unless you have anything else you'd like to add. What was your favorite? Uh, nothing panel? to add, sir. My favorite panel. I guess everybody's favorite panel. The one with substance, right? The the pyro missions thing, right? I like... didn't have a favorite because I thought they were all. <laughs> Honestly, my favorite I mean... one was the Gen Twelve one. Okay, all right. I mean, and the so only I... reason it was the Gen 12 one was because they went, here's where we are now, and here's what, like, at the very end, they said, these uh -huh. features of Gen 12 are in the game, these features are not, these are the next ones to come, and these are the last ones to come. Ta -ta -da! Right. There you go. That's all I needed. You could have ended the panel, you could have started and ended the panel right there. So yeah. That, that's, what, that's what I was looking for from the panels, is you can get technical and stuff, but then tell me where you are now, where you're going to be short term and where you're going to be long term and how no, it affects I like that. me. Done. Yeah, 100%. Like, because yeah. at the end of the day, not everybody who you're talking to are engineers or cares about what X, Y, or Z are. They just want to know what how it's going to affect what they're playing. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, but to me, I, I like the pyro thing. The three, the three options there. The like the 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 depth to that mission was cool. Obviously, the NPCs was still stupid. Although it was cool to see like stealth actually being like it, those were all NPCs. Whereas in previous Citizen Cons, they were like you know actors, right? They were just people who were like in the clients moving around or whatever. Oh, I this think time 2016 around. they were NPCs. Or 2019, so? 2019. I'm sorry, was NPCs. Okay. At the bunker. Um, yeah. Right. But uh but yeah, like this time around it seemed to be all in engine in game mm -hmm. and that was cool. Um yeah, so it, I want to see where that goes. By a dev who made the the 2019 demo that they were. Right. Yeah. But so I, yeah, I want I want to see where it goes. Um the idea of the artifact was nice, although you, what what I would like to see is something I don't think we will see because of sharding, which is like, you know, like they showed three Hadesian artifacts or whatever that turn into a ring. I would love those things to actually be like let's say there are only three or maybe there are only six sets in existence of three rings you know or three bits you know like uh mm -hmm. and then players will actually have to find these things and gather them and collect them and exhibit them that'd be cool yeah that'd be neat um that would suck for most people though <laughs> but, true but uh yeah yeah they, i think it would be too rare to do that mm, but i think it should be like yeah. an achievement to get the three rings you know, where it was be, yeah. be difficult. Can't be a Vandal Mask kind of s scenario, right? Where true, everybody true. can get it. Some yeah, things I, you I, can't get. Like, you just yeah. gotta... The people who work hard and play the game a lot, they gotta be rewarded too. So that's what right. I think people need to understand. Yeah, I mean, I come from, like, you know, World of Warcraft vanilla, right? Where you're always, like, the unwashed pleb, and you're in town looking at the people in full epics going, I wish I could be them one day, and you never were, right? Yeah. And then, like, uh, obviously with Elite Dangerous, where they have things that, you know, like, literally one person discovers and their name's in history forever, and then everybody else just goes there afterwards, right? Yep. There's got... I think Wait. Star System needs to be the middle ground of that. Right, right. Yeah. True. So, all right, Meyer. I guess we'll let you go here. All right, bud. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. All right, and before we go to the next caller... uh. 
twitch.tv slash Meyer, guys. Streams on Twitch. Has a YouTube channel. We're actually going to be reacting to one of his YouTube videos today. Uh, I'm super, super excited. So uh, Meyer's a voice actor, and he voice acts some of the lore, which I'm pretty excited about. So, uh, yeah, I, he's done one of them before, and they were really good. So I'm really looking forward to the, the next one. So make sure you check him out on uh, those those platforms, all right? All right, and our next caller is Groth. Groth, can you hear me, man? I can hear. Can you, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. How you doing? Perfect. Your uh, icon uh, matches my shirt. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, I'm. I'm in three days. I'm a backer for nine years. So yeah, seen, seen all con, Ceylon, all games uh, convention mm -hmm. uh, streams and so on. And I was in person in 2017, and that was great. But um, this year wasn't. Like I'm not disappointed. Like I'm fuming. Oh, okay. Like I, I, I was, I was pissed. I was in. Uh, in another Discord with a medium uh, size uh, like FPS um, YouTuber uh, mm -hmm. who, who uh, wanted to get more into Star Citizen, and basically after not even one panel, basically he left bored and disappointed. Even yeah, I mean, though I the the concept art at the beginning of the big reveal panel was weird to do it that way. It instantly yeah. puts you to sleep. Yeah, um, and I also think it 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 was more the, uh, a GDC Citizen Con than than a normal one. Yeah, and I think they they should have made it if they do digital, then don't do the side panels, do those in uh, in inside Star Citizen, and make it more for the public because yes, it's more for us backers, but it, it is the one time a year where they really, other than some events, where really the press. And uh, and non backers uh, look at Star Citizen through news, yep. uh, uh, written or in video form, and this time it was like, it was not very non backer friendly. It was not well digestible. It, it was, I think, just a horrific mess. Okay, I mean, even for me, I feel like it's a bit of a, an exaggeration to be a horrific mess, but. I just don't think it met the expectations that Star Citizen not only sets for itself, but that it sets for CitizenCon, you know? Yeah. And, uh, like, I agree with you, obviously. It was not good, man. It was not good. Yeah. And um, they tried some things, but it didn't work out. And um, the thing is, for me, is I'm not angry about it. Are you angry about it? Angry about it because it is the first CitizenCon for two years and also because I wanted to bring some people more towards the game or, or, or like show this is what they present. And yeah. at least I, I already have like lower expectations from prior citizen cons and and everything I follow. Mm -hmm. But this this was nothing I, I could show to somebody and even for me it was was bad to watch like in like hour after hour i got more distracted by other things than and really wanted to watch the thing yeah. including tony z and i love normally tony z panels yeah like i i actually yeah. went to work and i had no no regrets like when i went to work and i was just there relaxing um i i, I was at work relaxing instead of freaking out that I was going yeah. to miss the uh, the event and that I was missing out on something. I didn't even feel like yeah. I was missing out. Yeah. So uh, regarding the demo, uh, I have a, sh a few points written down so I don't have too much, like, spend too much time. Okay. Like, regarding the demo, I think it was not the most real demo. I think those were the 2.0 demos, like uh, Gamescom and... Uh, and the Dead Citizen Con, where they uh, did that stuff, I think that was more real. And the one where they showed Arcor and went to Hurston, even though we don't have uh, an, uh, those animals uh, in game yet, that was for me the most real one. This one was not even a mission; it was like uh, buying, tra uh, like a, a trader transaction in the in in in, in, a, in an outlaw sector. This is how you can acquire something. 
stealth shoot shoot uh, shoot, uh, shoot them uh, uh, like walk and shoot them or buy them like it was a neat decent transaction but I think it was not the most real one for me then yeah. the con then I think um, the bad things about the con were concept art and the too much tech talk uh, especially like um, I think they could have explained some things way simpler and like spending so much on the audio yeah I, like the lighting guys like in the years before they 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 also want their place in the in the limelight but like um from from what i hear from from some guys like uh, like graphical interfaces they they're not they're not special what is special is that they they made uh, some that interfaces with a live client uh, at cry engine slash lumberyard slash star engine mm. that is good but spending so much time on it was a waste in my opinion yeah. um then the biggest thing for me is like the the theme like this was so much about the past and not the future. The Tony Z panel, they, they went back and back and back again and again uh, to past events. Um, we talked about those events like over and over. Like we don't like, especially those that were GM driven, not not uh, what they now want to introduce, like driven by the, uh, like triggered by the player, triggered by the automated system. Like I think that was, just a mess and and just uh like info bits that could have been in a pillar talk then um the big thing also um at least they could have mentioned like chris chris should have been there uh at the end or so, uh, uh at least talking that he is expect like uh, that that he uh, wants to show us more about Squadron Forty Two, but uh, in the future he wants to tell uh, like he he is uh, excited about theaters of war in the future. Just just a sentence or so. No when we don't need an exact when. We a status would be nice, a rough status, but um, like in my opinion, like th this month's monthly report was more informing in in certain uh, aspects than the Citizen Con itself. Like they could have uh, in the ship panel uh, talked about the vulture, which is in gray box, even showed it a bit. They uh, th there are other uh, things that are mentioned in the this and the last monthly reports that they could have shown, including when uh, maybe even talked a bit about game mechanics in one panel. Like um, salvaging tier zero is soon in the game, so at least they could have had more of a clue what they want to do with it. And uh, maybe uh, showed a few things, maybe even concept art. But I think game mechanics are the are the one thing like the, this game needs, and we have to talk more about. And, and this patch got uh, got us some. But I think since CitizenCon is about the future of the game, we always have to do more and expect more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to disagree with that stuff. <laughs> I, I agree with that yeah. wholeheartedly. You know, it's just I don't I don't know what and, to do or how I, to feel anymore when it comes to this game. Yeah, and I I think CRG is still overselling tech that is standard uh, in in some other like parts of the gaming industry. I think DirectX twelve was is a twenty fifteen thing. Vul Vulcan version one twenty sixteen. To have now Gen twelve five years later. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is not 1.0, it is 1.2, but that that is more a thing they they catched up, not a thing that they and and uh, that they have to really uh, celebrate. Basically, like mm -hmm. it, it's a celebration for us that we probably get a lot more frames in some aspects in some scenarios, uh, 15 to 25 percent maybe, uh, if if you look at other games. Yeah. But that it is more catching up. Um, same with the cloud tech. Like I, I've seen this. I mean, playing some flight sim, some War Thunder. They also have beautiful volumetric clouds and uh, uh, implementation on a planet. Like we we have uh, seen. Like if if somebody has looked at uh, Zen Talks, like some SC community member, he did some uh, planetary tech in in Unreal Engine, uh, just by himself and using some plugins. Like a uh, rough imp implementation of, of volumetric clouds on a planet is like that wasn't uh, as big of a deal as as it as it seemed at least uh, 
uh, on a basic level when they're not moving and evolving. So I, I really hope that they go next year again with a bang, at least something that we can remember. I remember that that beautiful like video like from a few years where um, a guy, uh, like last name was Le uh, Levi, uh, he did a video um, like um, of, of all events, basically like the journey mm -hmm. uh, that, that we had with all uh, events and and uh, and and some uh, video segments of um, of the demos and 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 some uh, uh, of of Sandy and Chris talking and that was beautiful. Like we always had something that we really remembered. And this time, I I was like, "What are you gonna remember nothing. from this?" Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the for cloud. some, it might I be think probably going, going into the clouds, yeah. yeah. But um, th there was not this awe. There, there was always an an awe moment, like uh, yeah. seeing Arcor, seeing Hearst, and seeing Microtech. This time, it, it wasn't for me, mm. Yeah, sadly. Yeah, it's true. Well, I don't know where we go from there, Gross, so I, I guess I would ask you, is there anything else that's like on your mind, on your list? Uh, yeah, Go for to it. CIG, don't release the patch while we're watching. Like then again, like like my also said, release it after, yeah, uh, or or the day after, but don't release it while there is the presentation. It it it, uh, it distracts people. Uh, it makes them uh, not tune in anymore. But it also like it disvalidates the event uh, a lot, in my opinion. I think it shows but, what people were actually interested in. <laughs> yeah. Like you didn't put out an interesting enough event to even keep people there. They would rather go watch streamers play 315. Yeah. They, uh, apparently they lost 7,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. Because the event was so bad that they would rather play a buggy PTU wave one patch. Tells you nobody, at least 7,000 people of the 30 that were there so you know what is that yeah. you know a quarter I think that was of the, the people the patch was one care. thing that gave us hope yeah and, and and star citizen is all about the dream and all about hope and the patch gave us hope at least about the what what we will have in the live client uh, in the very near future but the presentation about what in the next year in the next two years maybe uh, should arrive didn't give me any more hope, sadly, yeah. than I just had. And it is my all-time low, sadly, for Star Citizen, after backing thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. I would say, uh, yeah, like, I am I think 315 has saved me a little bit, but I was definitely at my all-time low leading up to, to CitizenCon. I've never been so disappointing, depressed, uh, just overall disappointed with the state of everything. And um, CitizenCon did not help, but playing 315 definitely did. So, I don't know. Anything else on your list, Gro? Uh No, that's it. Just uh, basically that it was a real bummer. Yeah. And I hope they can recover for the future and maybe bring a small glimpse of Tio... Uh, uh, like Theaters of War or Squadron uh, in the in the uh, end of year events, just show a bit, just tell us a bit to to bring us a bit hope that we will have a game soonish. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So, all right, Grath, we'll let you go then, man. Thank you. All Goodbye. Right, have a nice day. You too. Uh, I'm pretty sure Theaters of War is literally just a dev tool now. Uh, Bull Moose, are you there? Hello, how you doing? So you're muted. You're on. Answer the call. You got me. I got you. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. So your thoughts on CitizenCon 2021? Well, SitCon was like going to McDonald's and ordering nuggets, fries, and a burger and finding everything as cold, soggy, and they shorted you on pickles. Damn, dude, don't short me on my pickles, okay? McDonald's pickles are actual pog. They're so good. Yeah. Double um, pickles. Don't short me on the pickles. Yeah, I had three things I was looking forward to. 
and all of which CIG failed to deliver on. Okay. One, I wanted to hear from Chris Roberts. Two, Why? I wanted Why? to have... Okay. We haven't heard from Chris Roberts in how long? And Ooh. I'm... I'm starting to get scared. Okay. Because we've... It's been what two years and we've had less than 30 minutes of cr on video granted he may be working on back-end stuff and helping out but he moved to the uk to work on squadron right but you know you could still have some more of a presence if that makes sense yeah, I it it doesn't to me. I don't know the obsession with his presence. I really don't. But at the the same time, I, I don't know. I think it, it gives people comfort for some reason. I mean, because um, he he's the captain of the ship, right? He's the one that's leading us on the way to his vision. And yes, if... but he, but there's seven hundred and fifty people. He is not in everybody's business. So there, he's not the captain of the ship anymore, is how I look at it. He is, yeah, he, like, steers the overall direction, but there's so many people working on all these things individually. It's not what it was before, and people want it to be what it was when there was no company and when there was nobody working, and he can literally sit there with his stupid paper and read off the, the uh, 10 for the chairman questions and say, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Well, now there's people telling him he can't. And now there's people saying, like, these are this is what it is. So I don't know. I, I don't feel the same way that everyone does about Chris. But continue. I'm sorry. I mean, it, it's just, a for me, a confidence thing. It's not, you know, yes, I know if he's going to be there, he's going to oversell. He's going to sense or sell us stuff that's going to be, you know, more than 10 years down the line in development. But at least he's still there. At least he's... It's an image thing to me that okay. the guy who founded or has this idea and image of the best game ever still being there and still being actively present. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth, but um, I wanted to hear from just have an overall sense of confidence because before I was concerned, worried about the uh, progress that's been happening yeah and now i'm scared because you've had what two years to deliver on something like a citizen con like this and you only give us that i'm i don't know what what to say about that and then the last thing was i wanted to hear about the cargo refactor why because i'm a trader i'm a hauler that's my thing yeah, I mean, I I really was looking forward to that too. No mention like doing mining too. No mention of the mining boxes being taken off and put in a cargo ship. No like that is big. That is yes. a big deal. That change that that is one of the biggest game changers. That is a bigger game changer I feel like or comparable game changer to looting and to to the inventory system in the sense that like big ships they I, I like the explanation that they gave they wanted to make small ships have value they wanted to make big ships not be so overpowered and this this was their solution to do so i was satisfied with the solution that they explained as a trader i assume that this was the panel that you really dove into what what did yes. you what did you feel about it i mean they they didn't talk much at all about the cargo refactor or anything. Mm -hmm. They said a whole bunch of stuff that they were that was in monthly reports and what they've been saying for weeks and months now. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that was in that last panel was a whole bunch of copium that does no one any good, except maybe feel good for about five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I was so, happy, again, with, with their explanation of, of it, and I think it dove a little deeper into the cargo refactor than 
um, at least their design intentions of the cargo refactor than we'd seen. Right, and and the the gold standard of the panels that I that I saw was the Gen Twelve and Vulcan. Even mm. though I don't understand any of it. <laughs> yeah. True. I mean, I I learned something, and they gave me graphics. Yeah, like, and I don't even said, feel like I learned much because I was just so it was kind of over my head. Yeah, but but they showed where we are, what's coming real soon, and then what's longer term. I, yeah. You no, know, you can you can talk, you know, in pig Latin to me, but if you give me graphics and show progress, I'm fine with it. Mm. Um. Also, no Squadron Forty Two. Um. I don't know. That's that's the main thing, right? And everything that gets developed for Squadron gets implemented into PTU. So if if nothing's getting put in to uh, the PU, then the only assumption I can make is they're not really making much progress on Squadron. Yeah. I mean, it's um, impossible to tell they're so quiet about it, dude. Right. And I, I think they could have done... They could have had two easy wins, which they didn't do. One was bring back the Bannister missions. You know, just update it. And bring back Space Dust. Because... Okay. Because, you know, since... Trading got nuked in 311. I've been getting into PvE, PvP just a little bit, and there's no sense of speed at all. So okay. you're flying at, what, 700, 800, 1,000 meters per second? And, you know, you, you cannot control your ship. You cannot have any effective combat other than jousting which is hmm. i hell. have i have somebody for you do you know who moist noodle is yes i watch him pretty much every single day so i started training with him and i don't agree with you at all it okay. doesn't it's not always jousting if you set the speed properly and prevent the jousting from happening Right? People right, can try that, and that, joust, but you can sort of prevent it. Yeah, it, it takes an experienced person to uh I think you should train with nip them. nip it in the bug. You should maybe try and train with them and then become that experienced person. And then okay. you don't need the space dust. But I yeah, I, 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 for us. I see what you're saying though, is that it, it would be better to have that indicator but yeah maybe it's just not pretty enough i don't know yep i don't know what else um you had the two easy wins with space dust and what was the other one the tisa banister missions just in... uh just adding more missions in general or bringing back those missions i don't know if that would have been Bringing or having some effective and completed missions. Yeah. I really would, like I said it earlier in the show, I would have loved for them to go back and really, really tidy up all the mission givers and just have that be a, a great experience in the game. Right. With storytelling like and that... start and a finish and um, rewards, things like that. Yeah. And... The, the demo or yeah the demo could have been a whole lot better if they had rearranged everything if you started with planet tech and then you yeah. added weather tech and then you added homestead creation and then and showed you showed it the progress you showed it all building up and having that at the end yeah. i think that would have been something much better than what we got because yeah. it all just felt like something falling like you, you have this great expo at the beginning, and then everything went downhill from there. Yeah, yeah, hard to disagree with that. I think that would have been a much better win for them than anything that we had. 
But I don't know. Yep, Do you have that's anything all else? I got. That's all you got? No. Nope. Okay, Bull. Well, I appreciate you. And yep. yeah, uh, definitely some different takes and, and interesting ones. Like Space Dust. I, I don't know how many people would have been like clapping for that, but at the same time, I understand why you feel it would be necessary. So thanks for calling, man. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me. Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. All right, and our next caller is Gold Leader. Gold Leader, what's up, man? You there? Hello, Gold. Testing one, two, three on Gold Leader. Nope. All right, Red Hyena. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, how's it going? Going good. Uh, sorry, you caught me off guard. I didn't realize I'd be on so quick. Well, yeah, Gold's um, mic wasn't working. Or just uh, yeah. wasn't there. Caught me off guard, too. I have um, to put your name in. <laughs> All right. Sorry, this is my first time doing something like this. I oh, was just okay, watching... Man. I was just watching the server meshing uh, video again. Okay. Because that was the only video I watched. I'll be flat out honest. That's the only thing I've seen from Citizen Con. Mm -hmm. Um... And you had said, if I'm not mistaken, in your answer to the call, that you were confused about it, yes? Uh, kind of, yeah. So I figured I would come on. I left a comment on your video. I don't know if you saw. Basically a mini essay. Okay. And I was thinking <laughs> maybe for you and other people who don't understand, because I'm majoring in computer science right now, so... Most of the stuff I caught, some of it went a little over my head or confused me, but most of it I understand. So right. I was wondering if it'd be all right for me to quickly explain some things. Please do. And and try and keep it as dumbed down and stupid as possible, okay? Because Don't worry, that's I what am I am. stupid, so <laughs> I'm stupid as well, so this won't be an issue. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so they start off talking about how it currently works. How it currently works is the... um. The server kind of works with sort of boxes of things that are rendered. So the Stanton system is one big box, and each planet is there another box. Each moon is a box within that box. Um, Object containers. Yep. Yes. And then it is streamed when someone comes in. Uh, it'll start streaming things. So it'll actually start physically bringing it into the world. Uh huh. And they were explaining, this works amazing with one person. <laughs> Yeah. When it gets to multiple people, you lose that advantage because everything's running at once. Mm -hmm. So what they they also discuss um, that with each instance, how they have a setup right now is that if something crashes, they lose everything because it's not being saved. Yep. So that re results in like you losing your cargo or your ship or equipment. So what they I, want to let do... Let me stop you for a second, because I would say most okay. of that stuff is super clear. The stuff that is not okay. super clear is the global instance versus shards. Am I going to see everybody that's in an area? Am I not? Are big battles going to be a thing? Um, that is what so, people are confused by. What, As I'm understanding it, shards are basically server instances. So each shard is like when you log on, you log on to an instance of 50 people. That's going to be called a shard in the future. So there will be no when big global instance that they said we would have had in 2012 that a lot of people bought this well, game for. What they're hoping for is that if they break it off into shards, they'll be able to make the servers bigger. This new system they have, they're hoping that they can make it bigger. So eventually they'll have 60 people, maybe at some point 100 people. I don't think it, with this game and its scope, it's a really big scope. I don't think it's going to be possible to get hundreds of people on a single server. Not only just because, like, you know, how much content they're putting in the game, but just I don't think that the hardware can handle it. I, I think mean, they can they optimize do it for other this games. Like, well, that would be. Con Pairing it to something like World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2. And I think it's safe to say there's a lot more going on in Star Citizen when it comes to planets, all the different items, the you know NPCs, of course, but like NPCs moving around, a bunch of players in their spaceships that Is are that all being fault? rendered separately. Hmm? Is that my fault? Is that my problem? 
Like, no. I bought the game because you said it would be a certain thing. I'm playing devil's advocate here. I hope you understand that. But it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not my I'm problem, man. That. You know what I mean? Like, you said you could do it. You need to do it. If it was not possible at all, then um, literally people who should have never been right are right. And it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. If they shouldn't have been able to do this, they should have outright... Or they should have said, we're going to try to do this. Because yeah. at the very least, if it failed, they could have said, we couldn't do this, but we're giving you the best that we can with this. Yeah. And if and then uh. we'll go to loading screens, or we'll do what we have to do. <laughs> but, yeah. So, so I don't know. Is just... that... You're going to... Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just kind of jumping through the video to, to remind myself, because I just watched it, to remind myself what they were talking about. All right. Um, at the persistence area, I think persistence is pretty simple to it's understand, clear. right? Yeah. Yeah. We should. Server lose nodes our stuff. as well. Server nodes are easy to understand. I don't. I mean, is what's the difference between a server node and a shard? I don't know. So, instead of having it where everything with the current how they have it set up right now is they have one server running everything. Uh, in the system. What they want to have is instead of having one server, they want several servers within the shard that are maintaining, like around Hurston, there'll be a server node. Around uh, Microtech, there'll be another server node. And all of these server nodes will be working, in, you know, working independently and yeah. will communicate with the shard to you know, say like, hey, this is what's happening right now, and I believe they've said that Surfer knows will also be doing calculations. Yeah. So rip PVP, rip. Like, here's the, here's the problem with all of this, and I think now I understand okay. why people are so upset. Uh, insert test squadron here. Uh, they will completely take over an entire uh, shard, and then you will not be able to attack them you will not be able to prevent them from doing whatever they're doing uh this is something that i see in a game called albion online if i don't know if you've ever heard that but they have like individual have. maps and what people will mm -hmm. do during the big wars that happen every year every quarter or whatever they do them every patch they every season whatever it's called they will actually like there's a cap to how many players can be in a server and one or one company one guild will just take over that area so there's not even a fight over it and then that is owned by them done and uh that that is i think what the worry is that people have and that's what i don't understand like is that am i understanding that correctly or am i not that is the big question so that everybody has can test squadron take over an entire shard and say nope it's ours stay away well you can technically do that with instances yes you can go why ahead is a shard have... not an instance i in my in, in the way that they explain the way that i'm interpreting it, interpreting it a shard is basically a more advanced instance where it's like breaking the instance down into several instances, but the shard is like the master instance. It's like the manager of the breakdown of different instances within the Stanton system. Yeah. So, so it's the, like it breaking, still doesn't it's like, do anything that they said they would have done, is basically my understanding. Which was I'm sorry. One, one global shard. We're gonna we're gonna see. If, if there's a battle, it could happen. Like, you, you can't take advantage of the system is basically what it seemed like was going to happen. I know it was never going to be EVE. Um, I know I know we weren't going to have, like, necessarily thousand people battles or something, but yeah, it just seems like it could be taken advantage of. You mean, like, people would hop onto a single shard instance, whatever, and they would have all slots, like, all 50 people would be of this Theirs. particular... What people do yeah. now. I they make their own server, and then they avoid the stream sniper or the PvP because they just want to have fun with their own players. And it and it could completely undermine, for example, let's use Pyro as an example, right? Pyro should be yeah. a, a largely lawless system that has a lot of mm -hmm. risk 
with a lot of reward, possibly, right? So we go to that reward area, and I'm Test Squadron, and I bring in um, hundreds of people into this instance, and I am able to reap the rewards with zero risk. Uh, yeah, like, hmm. Sounds like a you shitty know. game to me. Yeah, that does seem... That's probably... Ins that's, like, a problem with... I'm trying to think of, like, how you would, like, prevent something like that besides just making the shard bigger. But then you could just get more people on. I mean, from my, my understanding, these shards... Like, like uh, information on, like, trading will still be the same, but you're not going to be able to fight people in other instances, yeah. Because that's the point of an instance. Yep. Hmm. They specifically that's... mentioned that objects would be synchronized between shards. Like, everybody has their own opinion about this, so I really don't even want to talk about it anymore. Not going to lie, Red Hyena. You're saying one okay, thing, chat's saying another. Nobody agrees on it, and that, <laughs> and that, in the end, was the lack of success from that panel. It was too technical. Yeah. It wasn't clear enough about what is possible and what is not. And that was the problem with it. And I think we can agree on that. Because you're just going, this I, is yeah, my yeah. interpretation. Well, great. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I, yeah, I'm majoring in computer science, so I'm able to catch some of the terms. Yeah. But there, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on behind that curtain. I don't know what, like, even if they were to give me access to it, I probably wouldn't know for a few months what the hell's going on. Yeah. So it's, I just think that was it's the an... failure in that actual panel, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can agree with that too. Technical. Yeah. I I enjoyed it personally, but that's because I understood all the technical terms. Yeah, but, but I even can understand then, why. Maybe you don't. <laughs> it's possible you don't. Yeah. It's completely possible that I'm getting what shards are wrong as well. Yeah, I yeah, that's completely possible. Yeah. So who knows? But all right, is there anything else you want to discuss about the Citizen Con or? Um, you said you only watched this panel, right? Yeah, I I might. Probably you not. said something about Gen Twelve at the end. They listed a bunch of things that, like, you were saying that's the only thing that you cared about. Yeah. So I might watch that in a little bit. Yeah, take a look at um, that. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Okay, no problem, Red. We'll let you go then. But thanks for trying <laughs> to help. I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, if I'll, I'll ever get there though. So thanks, man. No problem. Bye now. All right, let's try Gold Leader again. Gold Leader, are you there? Come in, Gold Leader. No. So, all right, I guess we'll leave it at that. That is probably going to be today's answer to the call then. We tried. We tried. So, thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I did I did enjoy hearing some of your thoughts about it, but I I was more curious to see like was there going to be more positive people? Am I am I just being me? Because I saw a lot of comments on Twitter and a lot of comments on YouTube about I took the salty take because I am somehow, because my name is Salty Mike, that it somehow has to be my brand. I can't possibly be happy about anything. So, yeah, it's just like, I can't, I can't deal with it. It's It's like, I just didn't think this one was that good. I think it was a low point, and that's it. And no, Uriah's not dodged. I put him in the queue four times, and he kept getting out of it. So I, I yeah. Every time I put you in the queue, you left it. I don't, I don't know what to, to say. But it's also like an hour and a half long show, and yeah, I'll bring you in. I guess we'll, we'll, hello, are you there? Uriah? Bringing you in. Nothing. So, yeah, I, I I tried with everybody, but it just wasn't working out with some of you for some reason. I think we're going to try this thing called Discord Stages in the future, but yeah. Um, 
that should make it easier. There's something when people join and and just join Citizen Con or Citizen Con uh, Discord where their mics get messed up. So we'll try to have to work on that. I'm not trying to dodge anybody. It's like you kept coming in and out of the queue. But anyway, to do the outro of today's show because this is definitely the end. Um, I I'm not going to continue to try this because this is going up on YouTube as well. It needs to be somewhat clean. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'm just super frustrated. I'm super frustrated because I just want to enjoy Star Citizen. And, I, and I'm and i tired of people giving me a hard time about not liking what I see and then sharing my opinion about it. Because it somehow has to be um, my personality or something like it, it, it's it's not i enjoy things when i say things are good i say things are good but nobody ever hears those things so of course but thank you guys for watching i appreciate it and uh yeah thank you for watching i don't know what else to say that's the end of today's show i can't do it i'm getting angry for some reason because of stupid youtube comments but thank you guys uh post stupid stupid youtube comments below all right and I'll see you guys next, on not next week. I'll see you guys on Sunday. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye, everybody.